Here's the improved and connected segment. I'm a former Target employee, and I primarily worked in the clothing department for a total of seven months. Overall, I enjoyed my time there. It was a good job, and most of my coworkers and customers were pleasant. However, there was one coworker, Ed, who worked in the electronics department, with whom I had some issues. While I didn't know him very well due to the high turnover rate at Target, I did recognize many of the long-term employees like him. Initially, I only had brief interactions with Ed as I was closer to other coworkers. One evening during my break, when I was alone in the break room, Ed entered and struck up a conversation. He seemed friendly enough, asking about my interests and such. However, about five minutes into the conversation, he suggested hanging out and even coming over to my house. Uncomfortable with the idea, I politely declined and changed the subject. The rest of the break was spent with him doing most of the talking. Afterward, I returned to work, not seeing much of Ed for the remainder of my shift. However, over the following weeks, Ed began to seek me out more frequently. He would go out of his way to engage in conversation. And he even asked again if he could hang out with me. Here's the improved and connected segment. Ed's insistence on coming over to my house made me increasingly uncomfortable. His behavior was becoming rather unsettling, to be honest. After that encounter, I made a conscious effort to avoid him whenever possible. It wasn't until I heard that he had been fired that I truly reflected on the situation. I didn't receive any details about the circumstances of his dismissal or the exact timing, but I assumed it must have been for a good reason. With Ed gone, I thought I could finally put the matter behind me. However, my sense of relief was short-lived. One day, while I was at home in my apartment, I received a text message from an unknown number. Initially, I didn't recognize it, but when the sender identified themselves as Ed, my unease returned. It dawned on me that he must have obtained my number from the group chat we shared with other Target coworkers. His message was chilling. He informed me that he intended to come over to my house. Confused and alarmed, I quickly responded, politely but firmly asking him not to come over. I expressed gratitude for our time working together, but made it clear that I wasn't interested in socializing outside of work. Despite my straightforward message, Ed remained silent, leaving me uncertain about his intentions. As the hours passed and night fell, I couldn't shake off the feeling of dread lingering in my apartment. Here's the improved and connected segment. Found myself in my apartment, situated on the first floor of my building. It was around nine o'clock at night when Ed finally responded to my text. His message sent a chill down my spine. He claimed to be at my house. Instantly, panic set in. How did he know where I lived? Was he really outside my door? I began to sweat profusely, my heart pounding in my chest. Hastily, I typed out a response, but my fingers hovered over the send button as I hesitated, unsure of what to say. Feeling a surge of apprehension, I approached my door and peered through the peephole into the empty hallway. Perhaps he was lingering outside my apartment, but when I glanced out of the back window, there was no sign of him. I hoped desperately that he wasn't actually there, but his words unnerved me deeply. Summoning all my courage, I texted back, claiming I wasn't home, hoping it would deter him. Yet, his reply was chilling. Yes, you are home. I saw you. Fear gripped me as I frantically searched every corner of my apartment half expecting to find him lurking in the shadows. But there was no trace of Ed. Confused and terrified, I 
asked him where he was. His response only deepened my confusion. At my house. I peered out of the peephole and scanned the area once more, but there was still no sign of him. I began to wonder if he was playing some twisted game, trying to scare me, trying to convince myself it was a joke. I turned away from the door, and then there he was, standing on my patio, just outside the sliding door, his presence confirming my worst fears. Here's the improved and connected segment. Terrified, I screamed at the sight of Ed peering into my apartment through the sliding door. Without a moment's hesitation, I fled from the bedroom, bolting the door behind me and dialing 911. As I awaited help, the knocking on the sliding door persisted, accompanied by more texts from Ed, demanding to be let in and questioning my reaction. Ignoring his messages, I relayed the situation to the dispatcher, who assured me that help was on the way. In a state of panic, I ignored Ed's repeated calls and texts, opting to focus on the approaching sirens. However, the banging on the sliding door grew louder and more frantic, intensifying my fear. It felt like an eternity before the police arrived. But finally, their voices mingled with Ed's outside. With a sense of relief, I ventured out of the safety of the bathroom to find the officers confronting him. After explaining my side of the story, the officers escorted Ed away and issued a trespass warning, barring him from returning to the property. Thankfully, I haven't encountered him since that terrifying night. I took precautions, blocking his number and hoping to never hear from him again. It was undoubtedly one of the most harrowing experiences of my life. Reflecting on that ordeal, I remembered another chilling incident that occurred at Target last year. It was just another routine trip for groceries. I arrived at the store late one evening spent about 20 minutes browsing and shopping, then checked out and headed back to my car, parked nearby. Here's the improved and connected segment, minutes, providing further details about the unsettling encounter. As I stood by my car with one of the officers, recounting what had happened, the police swiftly entered the target to search for the suspicious individual. While I awaited their return, my mind raced with questions. Who was the man in my car? And what was his motive? The thought of someone lurking in my vehicle sent shivers down my spine. Although my car was mostly empty, the violation of my privacy was deeply unsettling. Soon, the officers emerged from the store, confirming that they hadn't found anyone matching the description. Despite my uncertainty, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had seen the same man inside the target. With a sinking feeling in my stomach, I realized that the incident might not have been a random occurrence. The police assured me that they would patrol the area and keep an eye out for the suspect. They advised me to remain vigilant and urged me to contact them immediately if I noticed anything suspicious in the future. Grateful for their assistance, I thanked the officers before they left the scene. Alone once more, I couldn't help but feel a lingering sense of unease. The events of that night had left me shaken and wary. I made a mental note to double check my car's locks in the future, determined not to let my guard down again. As I drove home from the target, my mind was filled with unsettling thoughts. Who was that mysterious man? And why had he targeted my car? The unsettling encounter lingered in my thoughts long after I arrived home, serving as a stark reminder of the dangers that lurked in the most unexpected places. Here's the continuation of the story with the new segment incorporated. Sales floor, assisting customers and restocking shelves. 
It was a relatively uneventful job, but it had its moments of excitement. One incident, in particular, stands out in my memory. It was a busy afternoon, and I was in the midst of helping a customer locate an item when I noticed a commotion near the entrance. A man was causing a scene, shouting and waving his arms erratically. Concerned, I excused myself from the customer and approached the situation, trying to diffuse the tension. The man seemed agitated and irrational, ranting about something incomprehensible. I attempted to calm him down and asked if there was anything I could do to help, but he became increasingly hostile. Sensing the escalating tension, I called for security to intervene. Thankfully, security arrived promptly and escorted the man out of the store without further incident. It was a brief moment of chaos in an otherwise ordinary day at Target. Reflecting on the experience, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the swift response of the security team. As I resumed my duties on the sales floor, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered from the encounter. It served as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of retail work and the importance of staying vigilant in any situation. Despite the occasional challenges, I enjoyed my time working at Target. The camaraderie among coworkers and the satisfaction of helping customers find what they needed made it a rewarding experience overall. However, the incidents I encountered during my time there served as valuable lessons in staying alert and ensuring the safety of myself and others. Looking back on those memories now, I'm grateful for the experiences that shaped me during my time at Target. While there were moments of uncertainty and even fear, they ultimately made me stronger and more resilient. As I continue on my journey, I carry those lessons with me, ready to face whatever challenges come my way. I was Chloe, working part-time, clocking in around 20 to 30 hours a week. On one typical evening, my shift ran from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. As the evening began, the store buzzed with activity. I hustled around the grocery side, stocking shelves, tidying up, and assisting customers with their inquiries. With six months under my belt, navigating the aisles felt second nature to me. As the night wore on, the store gradually emptied out. By around 9.30 p.m., the once bustling aisles were eerily quiet. While we weren't close to closing time yet, many of my coworkers had already departed, and the overnight team was starting to trickle in. Despite the calm, the grocery side demanded constant attention due to the steady stream of shoppers it attracted. All Target employees were equipped with walkie-talkies for communication. When I heard my name crackle over the device, I responded promptly, curious about the caller's identity. They instructed me to switch to the next channel, a request I complied with. It wasn't uncommon to receive calls throughout the shift, ranging from mundane tasks to urgent requests. As I switched channels and announced my presence, I was met with an unsettling silence at first. Then, without warning, a chilling laugh echoed through the walkie-talkie. It sent shivers down my spine, the hair on the back of my neck standing on end, unsure of who or what I was dealing with. I hesitated, feeling a creeping sense of unease settle over me. I couldn't shake off the feeling of unease. Who could be playing such a disturbing prank? Despite my growing suspicion that it might be a joke, the deep voice on the other end of the walkie-talkie seemed too real to dismiss entirely. I'm waiting for you in the parking lot. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end as I tried to process the ominous message. Was this really happening? Or was it some twisted prank? 
Brushing off the encounter as a prank, I focused on finishing my tasks. Soon enough, my shift ended, and I made my way to the employee area to collect my belongings. Exiting the store, I made my way through the eerily quiet parking lot, my footsteps echoing in the stillness. Approaching my car, I noticed another vehicle parked nearby, its engine idling. Initially, I thought nothing of it, assuming it belonged to another employee. However, as I reached my car and began to unlock the door, the other vehicle suddenly lurched into motion, speeding towards me. Panic surged through me as I quickly retreated into my car, locking the doors behind me. The other vehicle pulled into the space next to mine, its tinted windows concealing its occupants. Fear gnawed at my insides as I realized the gravity of the situation. Recalling the ominous message from the walkie-talkie, I realized that this was no harmless prank. With a sinking feeling in my gut, I knew I had to act fast. Without hesitation, I started my car and pulled away, the other vehicle following closely behind. My heart raced as I desperately tried to shake off the pursuing car. Fear gripped me as I realized that whoever was behind the wheel was intent on following me. In a split-second decision, I made a sharp turn and headed back towards the safety of the Target store, praying that help would be waiting for me there. Out of the parking spot, I kept a close eye on the rearview mirror half expecting the other car to reappear. However, as I cautiously drove away, there was no sign of it. Relief flooded over me as I navigated out of the parking lot and onto the road home. Arriving home safely, I couldn't shake the lingering sense of unease from the encounter. Who was the person in the car? And what were their intentions? The incident replayed in my mind, leaving me feeling unsettled and on edge. In the days that followed, I remained vigilant, constantly checking my surroundings and keeping an eye out for any suspicious activity. I reported the incident to the authorities, hoping that they could provide some answers. Despite the terrifying ordeal, I refused to let fear dictate my actions. Determined to reclaim a sense of normalcy, I returned to my routine albeit with a heightened sense of caution. Looking back on that harrowing night, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the swift actions of my coworker and the sense of solidarity we shared. Together, we had faced a potentially dangerous situation and emerged unscathed. As time passed, the memory of that night faded, but its impact lingered serving as a stark reminder of the dangers that could lurk in even the most familiar places. I vowed to remain vigilant and to trust my instincts, knowing that sometimes it's better to err on the side of caution. Into the parking lot, I navigated through the maze of cars, my heart pounding with each passing moment. As I rounded the corner, I breathed a sigh of relief as I saw no sign of the car that had been tailing me. Determined to evade any further pursuit, I took a different route out of the parking lot, opting for the lesser used back exit of Target. This decision led me onto a quieter road that ran behind a nearby sporting goods store. Without hesitation, I continued driving, putting as much distance between myself and the mysterious car as possible. Once I felt sufficiently removed from the situation, I found a secluded spot to park and gather my thoughts. Hidden from view, I waited anxiously, hoping that I had successfully evaded my pursuer. Minutes stretched into what felt like an eternity, but eventually the tension began to ease as no headlights appeared on the horizon. With a sense of relief washing over me, I finally allowed myself to relax, 
It seemed that I had managed to outmaneuver whoever had been following me, at least for the time being. After ensuring that the coast was clear, I cautiously made my way home, my mind reeling with unanswered questions. In the aftermath of that harrowing experience, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the back of my mind. Who had been behind the unsettling messages on the walkie-talkie? And why had they been following me? The lack of answers only served to fuel my apprehension, leaving me to wonder if I would ever truly know the truth. Despite the uncertainty, one thing remained clear. I was grateful to have escaped unscathed. As I reflected on the events of that fateful night, I resolved to remain vigilant and to trust my instincts, knowing that sometimes the only way to stay safe is to rely on oneself. As time passed, I found myself constantly looking over my shoulder, wary of any suspicious activity. The sense of unease lingered long after the incident, casting a shadow over my daily routines. I became hyper aware of my surroundings, always on high alert for any signs of danger. Despite my best efforts to move on, the events of that night continued to haunt me. I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, of being followed, even when there was no evidence to support it. It was as if the shadows themselves whispered of impending danger, leaving me on edge at all times. Confided in friends and family about my ordeal, seeking solace in their reassurances, yet deep down, I knew that the fear would never truly fade. The unknown assailant remained at large, their motives shrouded in mystery, leaving me with more questions than answers. In the weeks and months that followed, I took extra precautions to ensure my safety. I varied my roots home, avoided secluded areas after dark, and remained vigilant at all times. Yet, despite my efforts, the fear persisted, a constant reminder of the fragility of life. As time passed, the memory of that night began to fade, replaced by the routines of daily life. I returned to work at Target albeit with a newfound sense of caution. The familiar aisles and friendly faces provided a sense of comfort. Yet beneath the surface, the shadows of that night still lingered. In the end, I may never know the true identity of my mysterious pursuer, nor the reasons behind their actions. But one thing remains certain. I will never forget the terror of that night nor the strength it took to overcome it. And as I continue on my journey, I do so with a renewed sense of resilience, ready to face whatever challenges may come my way. As the chapters of my story draw to a close, I find solace in the passage of time. The echoes of that fateful night may still reverberate in the corners of my mind. But with each passing day, grow fainter, replaced by the gentle rhythms of everyday life. Though the scars of fear may linger, I refuse to let them define me. Instead, I choose to focus on the moments of courage, the acts of resilience that carried me through the darkest of nights. For in those moments, I discovered a strength I never knew I possessed resilience that defied even the most daunting of challenges. As I look back on my journey, I am reminded of the power of perseverance, the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Though the road ahead may be uncertain, I walk it with newfound determination, knowing that I am stronger for having faced the shadows of the past. And so, I bid farewell to the tales of fear and uncertainty. 
embracing the promise of a new dawn, for in the end, it is not the darkness that defines us, but the light that we carry within us, guiding us through even the darkest of nights. With hope in my heart and courage in my soul, I step forward into the unknown, ready to face whatever challenges may come my way, for in the end, it is not the fear of the unknown that defines us, but the strength we find in overcoming it.